This month's giveaway is a $10 gift card for your choice of PSN, Xbox Marketplace, Nintendo eShop, or Steam. How do you enter to win? It's simple. All you have to do is be a subscriber. Would you want additional entries? Then all you have to do is leave a comment on any of our full-length podcast videos for this month. The winner will be chosen at the end of the month. Good luck, and thank you for watching. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Press X Podcast, episode 18, your weekly podcast for nerdy news and opinions coming at you each and every Monday at noon Eastern. I am Kevin McManus. With me, as always, Kellen Willard. Hola. No Todd today. Where's Todd? Literally don't know where he is. <laughs> Hadn't seen him since Hasn't yesterday. answered the text. Hasn't answered. Might be dead. He was alive yesterday when we went to Civil War. Other than that, I don't know. Maybe the movie was so bad. He gave it a 7 out of 10. It's fair. Yeah. I was like, okay. Quick, quickie Civil War review. Since I wanted to do a full spoiler one, but Todd's not here. Yeah, Todd. So just real quick, no spoilers. What did you think of the movie? I liked it a lot. I see the complaints about Baron Man, Baron Zemo. Mm-hmm. He's just kind of... Weak villains, yeah. He's just kind of there. They handled all the characters really well. They did a good job with the, uh, the side characters. They let them show off in the big, famous airport fight. How do you feel about Spider-Man? He, st- he stills the movie. He's great. You liked Spider-Man? Yeah, I liked him a lot. I like that casting, too. He actually fits really well. Okay. Because it's like the high school Spider-Man. I like that Spider-Man. The whiny Spider-Man? Yeah. That doesn't shut up? He just talks a lot. The it's dead, hilarious. The Deadpool Spider-Man? He's like a Deadpool Spider-Man, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dear. Okay, so today we're not too much news. Uh, we're talking about release dates for a lot of things. We got release dates for Call of Duty and Battlefield and Persona. Finally, sort of. We don't have a release date, but somebody does. I mean, it might be my release date, depending on how that, things that's go. That's fair. I've already thought about it. And we got a release date for Game of the Year, Mighty Number no. 9. 2017. Remember those predictions last week? Way off. <laughs> um, also, like I said, we're uh, Todd's not here, so we're just going to skip the unpopular opinion this week, which would have been the spoiler thing. Yeah. Uh, we'll try to get it in. I don't know. It'll probably be too late, and Uncharted's going to come out, and I want to do one for Uncharted. And that'll so. be all we talk about. So. Yeah. And he'll have to leave again. Must have missed out talking on the Marvel things. Oh, well. <laughs> Bummer. So let's get into the news here. Probably the biggest news story. Yeah. Uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare is real. Um, it's taking the fight to outer space. Its trailer launched to very mixed reviews, and now I'm going to say negative reviews after today. When I wrote this, it was mixed. Yeah. Uh, the big news is that if you pre-order the Legacy Edition of the game, which is $80, you get Call of Duty 4 Remastered. Uh, it seems like a lot of the negative feedback is because Call of Duty 4 Remastered only comes with this pre-order bonus. Or as this pre-order bonus. Uh, so let's start with Infinite Warfare. Let's talk about that before we jump into 4. How do, how do we feel about that? I like the trailer. looks good. It's the first Call of Duty in a while that I, I may pre-order. I'd yeah. like to play this game. I am 100% down with you. I am. I don't have any problem with Call of Duties. Yeah, I don't either. I've I think they're very good games. Yeah, I've played a lot of them. I just I can't buy them every year. It's like Madden. I buy one every five years. Of every generation or so. Yeah. Uh, this looks like my Call of Duty, and the, the bonus of Call of Duty 4 is hugely enticing. Yeah, I'll probably pre-order the Legacy Edition. Yeah, me too. Also, you get the when you get your discount from Amazon or Best Buy, it drops the price down to almost what a normal game would cost, so I don't see the problem with that. Now, like I think the game looks awesome future i wish it was more alien it's not it's yeah, still I'm, that I'm fine with that but that would have been interesting it's still that modernish um warfare in that they are taking modern weapons and just what they would look like in the future they're not doing lasers and stuff unfortunately um so my problem with it comes with of course the pre-order bonus of call of duty 4 you can't get it anywhere else that's what they're saying yeah that's stupid no way that's going to be true i guarantee you six months from there now they're going to be like and here it is now digital download on psn for like forty dollars or thirty dollars people will go crazy my problem with it is that it splits up the user base and that's really my only issue yeah um, you're going to have people buy the Legacy Edition, and those are the only people that get it. So, obviously, that's a lot of people. A lot of people buy Call of Duty. But everybody buys Call of Duty, so you're looking at the people that buy the Legacy Edition. Then, they have to. Pr- it, I think it has to be a pre-order. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think it has to be a pre-order. So, then you're, you're narrowing it down there. And then, on top of that, there's people that are going to like Infinite Warfare better and want to play that. Yeah. So you're narrowing it. So like you're just hurting your user base. So that's the reason that I think they have to release it normally. It's just going to be an exclusive bonus for a certain amount of months, I imagine. Probably like three months. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be out. 
Eventually for everybody. So, <laughs> like, I think it looks great. I have no problems with it. I love the space. I love the space combat. I'm actually interested in the campaign. The ships look fantastic. Yeah, yeah it looks great. Um, so let me read off some trailer statistics for everybody, because this was crazy. And this was... I have yesterday's statistics and today's, and that's the crazy part. So first off, Black Ops 3 had 22 million views, 400,000 likes, and 80,000 dislikes. Sure. <laughs> Infinite Warfare trailer yesterday had 9.2 million views, 200,000 likes, and 475,000 dislikes. Jesus. Today we watched it, and it had 11.3 million views. It still had 200,000 likes, and it had 761,000 <laughs> dislikes. That's insane. That might be the most disliked video ever. It's probably pretty high up there. Like, Because I know the new Ghostbusters trailer, I think, had the worst dislike ratio. I mean, it should. But I don't know how many views it, because Call of Duty gets the views. And 11 million views, and almost a million of them are dislikes. That's not good. That's awesome. Not Not good for them, but awesome. Yeah, and then Activision came out and said that their pre-order numbers are strong and all that stuff. So, oh yeah, they yeah, always they're are. Playing it up. Um, yeah, November fourth, the game comes out. We'll see. I guarantee you, it sells. It's the top-selling game. All that of stuff. People, everything, people yeah. hate on it and then buy it anyway. So, yeah, whatever. Um, let's actually move to uh, number five on the thing if you want to. I want to talk okay. about Battlefield because it's the direct competition. Yeah, yeah. So Battlefield One. Which is the worst name what I've heard. What a great name. Jesus. I play in a move as stupid as the Xbox One in Madden 25. We now have Battlefield 1. But with Xbox One, you at least get X-Bone. Which oh, is that's true. Say. Yeah. I'm very interested when Madden gets to 25. They're going to be like, oh, crap. <laughs> Madden 2025. 20, <laughs> um, so this was revealed. Some people on Twitter that work for Battlefield, or DICE, I guess, were taking shots at the Call of Duty trailer, saying how good their trailer reveal was going to be on Friday, all this stuff. So the trailer came out. Uh, rumors were true. Alternate history, World War One, hence Battlefield One. Still dumb. So we have horsebacks and tanks and blimps and all this a mishmash of all this stuff. Uh, you got your basic sixty-four players. They said that they didn't use the term "levolution." That's my favorite term still uh, from E3 like two years ago. They're like, "It'll have levolution," where basically the world is always changing because buildings can fall down and stuff. That's still there. Yeah. And they started the hashtag "Rest in Peace COD," which actually was trending on Twitter, which is amazing. Um, probably because of the dislikes for their trigger. yeah. It's probably all the people that disliked it, or the one guy that has a lot of accounts that disliked it. <laughs> so. I was not interested at all in this when I watched the trailer. Yeah. It was pretty. Way prettier than the Call of Duty trailer. Yeah, this stuff's always pretty. The Call of Duty trailer also looked in engine and like actual in engine like gameplay from yeah, you it know, looked like gameplay. a wide camera. Whereas this looked like a CG trailer you'd show off at E three that has nothing to do with the game. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. Um, I know it's a big debate, Battlefield versus Call of Duty. I think Battle or er, I think Call of Duty's mechanically way better. I like the scale of uh, Battlefield. I like that they do more squadron and tactical stuff. That's cool. But I, at the end of the day, I have more fun with Call of Duty. And once again, at the end of the day, I typically don't buy either of them, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. Yeah, I usually have more fun with Battlefield, but Call of Duty is more competitive. You, in my yeah. Opinion. Yeah, well, there's also just way more people that play it. Yeah. So there's just that bigger hive mind for the game. So I'm still salty about Battlefront, so I didn't even watch this yet. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yeah, it was just a one minute. It, it was a t They did a teaser that was a few seconds, and then they did the one minute trailer. Uh, something I do want to talk about is it comes with a another collector's edition that's insane. It's a $220 collector's edition that comes with a statue of the soldier from the cover of the game. Just a random generic. Nobody wants a soldier statue. <laughs> That's like putting the statue of the Call of Duty Four guy in the collector's edition. Yeah. Nobody cares. Point? It's not like a known character. He's not popular. No, like, He's just a generic soldier. Like Halo Five, at least had uh, Master Chief in the statue that they yeah. did and stuff like that. And so I can understand people wanting it. The Gears of War one is a new character, but people are gonna. He's gonna be in the trilogy. Yeah. This I highly doubt we'll ever see this character again. Does it, I mean, he doesn't even like have a name. He's just generic soldier, right? No, I think he has a name. They oh, he has a name and stuff like that. But once again, it's like soap from Call of oh, Duty Four. Yeah, like nobody nobody cares. 
Um, yeah, he was fine. I'm sorry if whatever. people do care, but I I don't care. So sorry. And for two hundred and twenty dollars, I think you get the statue. You get some like trinket, uh, you know, like a keychain or something, and then you get something DLC. I was like, right. yeah, it's not worth two hundred. These bucks. people, it's more than the Mirror's Edge one. Might like be I said w- before, love Mirror's Edge, won't buy that collector's edition. Way too expensive. It might be worth a hundred bucks, but not two hundred. Mm. There's another statue we can talk about a little later. Um, next up in the most important news of the year, Mighty Number no. Nine has officially gone gold. They sent out a message to their Kickstarters, and the game is apparently printed and ready to go and to be distributed on June 21st, the same day as No Man's Sky. No chance. What are they doing? What a great day to release. <laughs> like, and the problem is this. Like, I guess I'll finish the news story. So Inafune said, this is the last delay. We're sorry. We're still delaying, which is contradictory. Uh, We're still going to delay the 3DS version and the Vita version. So the handheld versions, which always happens. Yeah, I mean, that's Um, They delayed the Vita Axiom Verge. We finally got that. They delayed uh, the Vita volume, I believe. We finally got that, whatever. So that, that doesn't matter to me. I'm like, okay, but... Putting it out on the same day as No Man's Sky is such a dumb move. That's just not a good idea. I don't know why you wouldn't just put it out the next week or the week before or something. Um, I, I don't know. It just seems crazy. Uh, and something that I wanted to note is I'm not going to be in town that week, actually. That's yep. one of my weeks off. And I ordered a physical copy of um, Mighty Number no. 9, the collector's edition, to be shipped to my house. So I'm not even going to get to play the game. I mean, I'm going to get the Kickstarter code, so I'm going to be tempted to type in my digital code, but I kind of wanted to give that away because yeah. there's no point, and I'm going to open the collector's edition. Um, so now I'm, like, torn. I'm like, oh, now I kind of just want to use this digital code and play the game. Be able to play it, yeah. But I guess I'm going to pick up No Man's Sky and then play it till I get home. And then, the, of course, the day I come home, Tokyo Mirage is out, so I'm going to want to play it. I think, this will be a rough week. This is so bad. Oh, my gosh. So... Super excited for the game. I'm glad it's finally coming out. This Kickstarter was a disaster. Um, some things that they need to do better, if because they, they do actually have other Kickstarters, if their communication was awful. It started out fine. They were doing polls. They were doing, like, you know, which character, what weapon do you want this character to have? And what mode would you rather have? Like, all that stuff. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And then silence for a year and a half. We haven't seen anything from it. We're supposed to get a documentary. Yep, we're supposed to get documentary. Yeah, of making like the making game. Out, yeah. yeah, we're supposed to get that. Uh, we hit all these backer tiers that I don't have written down, but um, it's so sad that it's to the point where it's like, it's just, I just, I just, just want the game. Just put the game out. Yeah. I don't care. Like there, there's gonna be salt in the wounds when this comes out. If it's not a, anything but amazing, which it's not gonna be anything, it's just gonna be good. Like it's gonna be a Mega Man game, and everybody's gonna like it. But they're going to be disappointed that it took that long to get this game that they wanted three years ago. Yeah, to get what they're getting. But I'll be happy with it. That's surprising. Um, and then something else I noted is that this year, I'm. it looks like I'm getting a Persona game, a Mega Man game in Mighty Number no. 9. Gravity Rush 2 is supposed to come out this year, and I got the remake of Gravity Rush. Um, and we might get Kingdom Hearts uh, 0.2 this year. Probably not, but we might. So I might get basically all my favorite franchises this year. The only one missing is uh, Silent Hill, which we might have also gotten, <laughs> unfortunately. And that PT game coming out soon. Oh, never mind. Oh, I hate you so, so much. <laughs> Let's talk about something I don't hate. What? Uncharted 4 multiplayer. Uh, so Naughty Dog went ahead and put out a bunch of information on their multiplayer model, what they're going to do. And this is awesome. Huge improvement from 3. Uh, 3 and The Last of Us were very pay to win and even if they weren't it felt like it because they had pay weapons yeah. and every time you got killed by a weapon that somebody bought even if that weapon wasn't stronger you felt like it was stronger you're like oh I got killed by didn't have that gun. I got killed by three dollars <laughs> like that's how it felt um, so I'm so glad that they did this so they put out a little chart it was fairness first uh, they wanted an evolving experience content for everyone and a unified community that was their four bullet points that they wanted to hit so I have a little sheet here um, you don't have it oh just me uh, I have a little sheet here it's the multiplayer roadmap and they talk about what they want to put into the game at no additional cost they make t- they make sure to underline that so summer 2016 we're getting new maps we're getting new game mode, 
new weapons, new boosters, which are kind of like your uh, perks for anybody who hasn't played it. New mysticals, which are kind of your finishing attacks. They're like super powerful abilities. Uh, a, re a cinema replay feature, 50 plus new skins, and 100 plus new vanity items, so things like glasses and hats. In autumn, we're getting co-op, which I imagine is like Uncharted 3's co-op, where it's kind of like horde mode. Like a horde mode, yeah. Um, we're getting more maps, we're getting more weapons, more boosters, new mysticals, 50 skins, 100 vanity items. Winter, we're getting more weapons, more boosters, more skins, more, vani more vanity items, and more. And then the same thing for spring. So all that stuff's coming. Um, and the important thing that they wanted to stress is that you can unlock everything in-game by picking up relics. And they kind of had this gameplay cycle that they wanted where they have daily challenges that will unlock relics. And the relics are used to buy the stuff. Or you can just buy it right away if you want to spend the money. Uh, something else interesting that I think they noted is that the digital version, if you pre-ordered the more expensive one, comes with the first uh, single-player DLC, like their first ever single-player DLC. So they did one for Last of Us, which is Left Behind, which was a 10 out of 10. It's an amazing DLC. It was like three-hour story. It was great. Um, they're doing one from Uncharted, and if you pre-ordered the $80 one, I think it's included. You get it for free when it comes out. You say just digital one or just the $80 version? Um... That's a good. I'm not 100 percent sure. I'd have to look it up, and I'm okay. not going to do that right now. But if you are, if you did pre-order, um, by the time this comes out, you'll have like a minute to change your thing if you're interested. But they did say that they are including the single-player DLC with, I believe, the eighty dollar and up ones. But I'm not sure if it's yeah. Digital that's the one right. I pre-ordered, the eighty dollar one on Amazon. I got two of the hundred and twenty dollar ones. Nice. I canceled my order, and they were like, "We'll email you when it's canceled." And I waited two days, and I'm like, "I never got that email." And I was like, "Well." I guess I'll check what's going on here. And then it said shipped. And I was like, oh, can't cancel it now. So I, right now. I have two of them coming. I have the um, pre-order bonus for both of them already. Got them in the mail. It's a coin. I didn't bring it up. It's just going to bring it. Um, so cool. I got two of the $120 ones. Good job. Uh, that's the one with the statue that I wanted to talk about. I looked at some unboxings of the statues because some reviewers and stuff obviously already have it. Um, statue's kind of cheap. Not great. It's not super heavy. It's kind of, it's not plasticky. I mean, it is, but it's just kind of light, um, nicely painted and everything. So it looks really nice. It's just not heavy. Not the best materials. Yeah. So whatever. It's just to make it cheaper. Otherwise, otherwise you have the $200 otherwise it'd be statue $200, problem. Yeah. yeah. My God. Um, so moving with more uncharted, I want to talk about the reviews fairly quickly. Um, and I kind of want to bash IGN a little bit. All right. So IGN now does this review in progress thing. I don't know if you know anything about it. I don't know how often you go there. Not very. They did a review in progress for Battleborn, and they put out the final review today, so it's perfect to talk about. The review in progress was a 7.4, and they said they've only done the single player. They haven't done the multiplayer, the Which point the of the game. the bulk of the game, yeah. So then they were like, we're going to spend a few days doing the multiplayer, and they did, and they came out with a 7.1. And I was like, I don't know how that works. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. So, whatever. We're going to talk about Battleborn later. I love that game. Um, so, Uncharted's review in progress came out, and they gave it an 8.8, .8, which is by far the lowest. Um, the Metacritic on Uncharted is a 94 overall, yeah, which that's is insane for Metacritic. the highest Metacritic of the year for any media at all. By a couple digits, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's insane. Unchar or the IGN review is the lowest one, though. It's still a review in progress. They're doing the multiplayer now, which apparently can make it drop. <laughs> yeah, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> They're like, oh, this thing that's included for free, it makes the experience worse, even though it's completely optional. Like, if it wasn't optional, I would understand, but it's completely optional. How does it drop? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, uh, so they have an 8.8 .8 for the story saying that it's not paced well. It's like... 16 to 20 hours depending on how long you take and they said that it's a couple hours too long which is fine whatever um i'm not gonna attack them for the review that's not even technically finished or anything i don't care um i'm just i just wanted to point out that it, that's the lowest review score i've seen everywhere else is five out of five four point five out of five or a 10 out of 10 i think i saw like a 9.4 was the other lowest one so game seems incredible yeah that's Pro what we're hearing. probably the best next gen game we're gonna have this year I'd imagine. Maybe any year. It's quite possible. 
until Naughty Dog makes another game. Oh, yeah. Crash Bandicoot. We have Crash Bandicoot news on here. Um, moving on, Persona 5, our lord and savior. Oh, Jesus. Has a release date. In Japan, uh, uh, the countdown ended on the Japanese Persona website, revealing new music, a new trailer, and a September 15, 2016 release date just two weeks before Final Fantasy 15. So, some questions. Uh, American release date. They said they're going to be at E3. Or is it coming out this year? I don't know. I don't either. I really hope so. Me too. I don't, I don't think they do November, so I, we'll probably see it beginning of 2017, I would guess. Do you think so? Yeah. I'm I'm hopeful that it's going to come out the same day. I, I want it to, but we I, I don't just think haven't it will. seen anything in English about the game. But to be fair, a lot of those Japanese companies like uh the Hatsune Miku game, all that stuff, those JRPGs, things like that, minus like maybe Star Ocean we got kind of early. But um they're like, "Hey, and it comes out in 3 months." Like they do that a lot yeah, with those that's games. Fair. So hopefully that's what we get. I would like I don't want it to come out that week. I, I guess that's a... We should talk about that. Um, it's going directly against Final Fantasy Fifteen. Pretty much, yeah. How do we think that's going to turn out? I mean, Final Fantasy is the bigger name over here by far. Over over here, yes. Yeah, over here, For sure. Yes. I'm very interested how Japan... Yeah, I don't know what the Japanese that. numbers would be on that. But over here, I don't think it would do as well. It's also important to note Persona 5 is on PlayStation 3, and Final Fantasy Fifteen isn't, because... Uh, Japan still has a know, lot of a lot PS3s. of PS3s. Um, yeah, that's. I think if they do that here, it's suicide. It's yeah. an awful, awful play. Even though I think Final Fantasy's scared of Persona, I don't think they're that scared. They're not. Yeah, they're. they're I think Persona change. should be more scared than Final Fantasy. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So hopefully, uh, E3 comes along. We get a nice shiny trailer. The English trailer. With a release date, please. With America. a release date, and I hope, I want. I mean, I want November because there's only one thing I can think of in November that's coming out that I want, and that's Tomb Raider for the PS4. Maybe Call of Duty. Maybe Call of Duty. Yeah, if this comes out and costs, screw Call of Duty, and this comes out at the same time. Um, I actually would. I know, it's a little bit more common with Japanese titles, but a December release date would be awesome for me. Personally. That would be fine. I'd be okay with that. Give you something to do in December. Um. Yeah, so uh, we saw the roster of characters. Yep. What do we think? I like them so far, what I can tell. Yeah, they obviously we don't have too much of their they're, personalities. They're all well designed, I know that. So Yeah, they always are. Uh, I like the nerdy chick. She's my she's my favorite so far, just from the trailers. She's cool. She seems like Rise, like a support character. She's not going to be fighting too much, it seems yeah. like. Um, Cutscenes are beautiful. The anime always are, but yeah. are awesome. The, the just amount of polish and style, the way the menus flow into the gameplay, and how when characters talk, like their text bubble rips through the game, and then re- oh, it looks so good. Yeah. I'm so excited. The game's well gonna be amazing. I hope so. I, it's gonna be a if it does come out this year, it's gonna be a rough game of the year. Uh, year, yeah, no discussion. Um, I already we're gonna do a game of the year talk. Probably in July, like when they halfway mark. First half. Um, and I already have a couple games on there that I, I don't want to oh, yeah. show my cards to. But if Persona comes out and maybe Final Fantasy 15 and we got Mighty Number no. 9 for me, I know you don't care. Yeah. And, and we got No Man's Sky and possibly Red Dead. And oh my gosh, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be a tough year. Moving on. Uh, this was something from last week that I didn't talk about because I almost didn't believe it. Um, Nintendo's only playable game on the show floor at E3 this year is going to be Legend of Zelda. What the hell? That's it. That's that's, that's the it. news story. Um, yeah, I don't know what they're thinking. Like, they're going to do their... There's not a single Mario title they can have playable. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> they're going to have their direct... Which they said is going to heavily focus on Legend of Zelda, but there's going to be other stuff. I'm sure we're going to yeah, there has to be. I'm sure we're going to see Sun and Moon. I'm sure we're going to see a new 3DS game of some sort, and we're going to see stuff. But their only playable game. They have the biggest booth. What are they doing? Just a bunch of Zelda. Yeah, and I mean, it's probably going to be like a half an hour demo. So I kind of get that. Like you have a, ha- you're going to go in there for a half an hour, and there's going to be a big line, and you're going to sit down and play Zelda. And they're they're going to want a lot of them. Yeah. But Zelda's not something you go back to and play more. Like Smash Brothers, when you play Smash Brothers, it's like, I'm getting back in line, <laughs> you yeah. know? I, I don't know how many people are going to get back in line for Zelda. 
Probably none. I'm not even going to get in line for Zelda. Well, you're not going to be there. I didn't exactly. So I I, th- I feel like this is a mistake. Um, th- they're not showing off the NX. We talked about that last week. I don't know what they're doing. This is just really awkward. W- why go to E3 at all? If Because the game's not even going to be out this year. I don't no. know. I guess just to keep Nintendo f- in people's mind. And then they're going to have their huge blowout with the NX, which is now apparently going to be competing against the Neo and the new Xbox One rumors that we got. It's going to be rough for them, too. Yeah. So it seems... I think Nintendo might be done with consoles if this thing isn't absolutely amazing. Isn't like a Wii. Like the original Wii. It doesn't Wii. sell like a Wii, yeah. Yeah. If not, they may need to move on to uh, just handheld and mobile. Yeah, or just make games for PS4 and Xbox. Yeah, that's fair. Gosh, imagine a PS4 Mario. It'd be beautiful. Yeah. Wii U games are beautiful. They too. look good. They look great for their hardware. Yeah, they really Imagine do. them doing that on PS4. That just make me want to play Ratchet and Clank. No, well, that's true. Yeah. Um, so this is something that Gareth, friend of the show Gareth, he uh he said you would know about. Because I don't care. What? Uh Dawn of War three. Do you know anything about Dawn of War? Nope. We're done here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. Some people were real excited about this trailer. He sent me it. I watched the trailer. It was a CG trailer, but it's like a turn-based or not turn-based. It's like a, it's some sort of strategy game. Well, it's a Warhammer game. Warhammer 40k. D- yeah, sure. You I don't, don't know what Warhammer is. Uh, it's little miniatures. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. But they make video games now. So. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of I I listen to a bunch of podcasts and there's, pe- there's people that are really really excited. So check out that trailer if you know what Dawn of War is. At. I probably should. It, the thing is, it's just like a super CG trailer, which never almost never get me excited. Like yeah, I, mean, I want to see gameplay. There's only a couple of CG trailers I can think of that got me super excited. There was Gears of War. Well, mm. yeah, sure. That's mostly, but yeah. I mean like a reveal trailer. Yeah, that's fair. Um, a Final Fantasy VII remake. It's a big one. That one got me really excited. Um, Recore, mainly because it said Inafune was working on a game, and I love everything he does. Like, the game, I don't barely know what the game is, but that's supposed to come out this year, too, by the way. Doesn't matter. Um, and then if you do a CG trailer for just a game, like Kingdom Hearts 3, Lost, and they actually showed gameplay on that reveal, so that doesn't even count, technically. So, yeah, like... Anytime you just do a CG trailer like that, I, I don't care. Just to show off characters or something? Yeah. Oh, uh, I guess we should note, there's a fan going on a little bit in the background, so if you hear, like, a humming, that's what that is. I'm sorry. It's so hot. We have ice in our cups. That's why we're drinking it. I wonder what it sounds like on here. <laughs> the audio is just awful. So if there's a humming, that's what that is. Yeah. We're going to try to fix it later. You're meaning gonna another... Tr- you're going to try to fix meaning it Meaning, like, next week, maybe we'll fix it. We also have this new setup. It's real nice. You this is probably really loud. You have fifty percent of it. Yeah, 50. it's your fault. You don't have a new setup. It said it'll be your Tuesday. <laughs> Ordered a bunch of new stuff. Sent it to the wrong house again, <laughs> like I did last week. You don't know how to use Amazon, do you? <laughs> Had to cancel it. It was funny because I did it, and two hours later, I'm like, "Oh man, I need to cancel that order." And I went to cancel it, and it's like already processed. I was like, "Oh gosh, it won't let me cancel it." So I went to to cancel it four or five times, and it eventually worked. I was like, oh. and "Then I ordered it again." And That's kind of odd. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, hopefully we'll have a cleared table eventually. Eventually, Todd can show up, be alive. <laughs> no clue. Uh, let's move on to some Dark Souls developer news, shall we? Yeah. So we talked about last week how they weren't going to work on another Dark Souls game, but apparently they're working on something. Uh, they didn't really say much other than they had new game in development, and it said PlayStation Four, Xbox One, PC, and PlayStation VR. So, from software working on a VR game, what do we want to say? I don't know. I want to see them do something different, though. Yeah, I can't think. The thing is, it has all the platforms. So, it, yeah. it has to be some sort of um, game that VR isn't required. So, But maybe better in. I don't know. That's yeah, a, there's something that one. it can have an, an addition to, like racing. Not, It's not going to be a racing game. No. But, for example, a racing game can have VR, and it's a regular game, and it works seamlessly. Maybe something first person where it's just better in VR, but works everywhere else. Right. So the only thing, I looked through their catalog. The thing that I saw that stood out to me was Armored Core, which is actually a series I like. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that would be sweet in VR. I'd probably throw up playing that in VR. I don't care. It's very fast I don't pace. care what you do. Um, It'd be your helmet, so you might care. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so that's the only one, and I checked to see if they own the IP because I was thinking Sony owned it, and they don't because there's uh, Xbox Armored Core games. Is it four or five that's on yeah. Xbox? So I was like, oh, I guess they own the IP because I know they don't own Bloodborne. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was the only thing I could think of. Like I said, we don't know anything. It was just like a tweet or some little post uh, that said they were working on another game. Uh, exciting. Not yep. going to be Souls, according to them. Well, yeah. Armored Core would be fun in VR. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, it seems awesome. Yeah. I just hope it's not like a rail shooter or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I want full Armored Core. I want more complete VR experiences. Um, there's a couple of them out there that seem like they're going to be full games. and that, Like I said, racing games and stuff like that. But there's so many that seem like they're just small little things, which is fine. Just to show off VR. and you know. I'm glad they exist, but I want the meat and potatoes now I, you know i want the what the console can do with a full game i want to see some full vr games where you're sitting there for a few hours playing these and, and your neck you know, hurts from wearing this damn thing and you're crying <laughs> 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 all right and then this is just something i added really quick um because i saw it the division i added this for todd like you know what division player base drops off 81 percent since launch um, these are Steam numbers. It started with 114,000. It's down to 22,000. I guess you play Division so we can talk about it. I haven't Damn lately. It. I'm one of the people that dropped off. <laughs> um, yeah, so 81% drop off since launch. Seems about Surprising? Right. Not surprising? Mm, not really. That doesn't really surprise me all that much. That's just the Steam numbers are overall. Just Steam. Just Steam. Yeah, see, I don't even have it. Do no, I don't even have it through Steam. I have a hard copy, so. That's what people were talking about. They were saying, well, lots of people bought it through Uplay and all this stuff. Um, and it, they put a note there. It might include those. It might not. They don't know. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, it was something on Reddit. Um, so, yeah, I just put that in there. Uh, Todd still semi-plays it. I really do think it's due to all the cheating. Uh, that doesn't help. It with, really doesn't. Yeah, when somebody can cheat their way through a bunch of the content, you f it's very similar to the Last of Us thing. You die by a weapon somebody bought, and even if it's not more powerful, it feels more powerful. You're like, uh. And this is the same way. Every character you see that's higher than you, you're like, oh, they must have cheated. He did. They must have cheated. He bought something or cheated. So. Yeah, so. He glitched through a wall and did a month of content in two days, you know. <laughs> Todd's the worst. Let's just talk about how Todd's the worst. Is he still alive? Do we know? We don't know. Wouldn't yeah. that be... What if <laughs> What if he's not? And this is just... This is a tribute podcast. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time I made fun of somebody. Mm, that's true. That was nearly dead. There was that dragon cancer. That was a good remark. That was on you. <laughs> <laughs> what a dumb name for what a stupid... stupid. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on to fact or fiction. It's the rumors of the week where I bring up some rumors that I heard and we talk about if we think they are fact or fiction. Are they happening or not? Um, this first one, something that I, I feel like I know your answer to. Lex Lang, the voice actor of Crash Bandicoot's villain Neo Cortex, stated, This week I have been asked to resurrect three different characters that I voiced from three different games. A doctor, a devil, and a droid. That's all I can say. Is Lang playing the Doctor Neo Cortex in the next Crash Bandicoot game? Now, let me preference this oh. by saying he has played Doctor Doom in some Marvel stuff. He played not Doc Ock, but another Doctor in not Doctor Strange. I don't know. He played another Marvel some Doctor. Kind of doctor. Um, so there's other Doctors that he played. Fact or fiction? Is he playing Doctor Neo Cortex? No. You don't think so? No, but I want him to. <laughs> <laughs> Are you turning back on your prediction of Crash? <laughs> I think we'll get something Crash, but uh, I really hope he is, but I, I don't know. I don't think they'd let him say anything if he was. I agree. I think they would want for the Crash reveal to be the biggest thing that they could possibly do. It would be at Sony's event, even if it's a multi-platform game because it's owned by Activision. Yeah. It would be at Sony's event. Um I agree. I don't think it's it. But if you are doing Crash, please get the original voice actors yeah, for everything, characters Everything like as close to original as you can, voice oh, actor Oh, man, that'd be great. I love Neo Cortex. Is yeah. the PlayStation Neo the PlayStation no. Neo Cortex? No, you're an idiot. Are you sure? 100%. What if that's the launch? What if it's the not Neo a console Cortex? at all? It's just <laughs> it's just a Crash Bandicoot game, it's and that's the, the code Crash name. Bandicoot skin for <laughs> PS4. I'd buy it. Makes it run faster. Yeah, so I don't buy this. I think it's fiction. But I want it to be fact. I want it to be real, but I don't think it is. Um, and then we only have one more uh, fact or fiction this week. Not much. There's going to be plenty coming up uh, with E3, though. An image leaked online of what looks to be the main character of Watch Dogs 2. Actor Court King posted on his Instagram the picture saying that he had a blast doing the motion capture as the lead character of Watch Dogs 2. Fact or fiction? Sure. 
Yeah, I, fact. Yeah, yeah, I think it's fact. Um, so it looks like Watch Dogs Two is real. I agree. Um, character looked just the, he had the stupid the thing, the bandana. Cover, yeah. He looks just like another. Oh. So I guess the way to put it is the Assassin's Creed characters all look the same, but they're slightly different. It looks like Watch Dogs is going the same route. They're all going to have bandanas and hats, mostly and covered you can up. See their eyes. Hey, I recognize those eyeball. <laughs> cool. Uh, not interested in Watch Dogs 2 at all. I'm um, a little bit, but yeah. So, okay. We both agree on that one. We both disagree on the Cortex. Unfortunately. Yeah, I wish it was the other way around. <sighs> uh, all right. Let's move on to viewer questions. All right. This is a lengthy one. That's fine. By Nick. These are actually both by Nick. Well, yeah. Um, I don't really feel like reading this, but I guess I will. I preface this by saying I don't know how many <clears throat> how many of you are fans, just two of us this time because Todd's dead, yep. <laughs> of the racing game genre. Uh, I don't really care. Blah, blah, blah. I think this may come as a shock to you guys, but it's actually my favorite. Here's some questions. Do you think that the genre is dead with the recent release of n- recent release of note being Need for Speed 2015, which was awful? Yeah. Um, plagued with the EA always online curse and Forza 6, which everyone's sick of. I don't fully agree with that. Forza sell very well. Um, there's old reliables like Mario Kart, which is the best racing game there ever is, each <laughs> generation, and, but no new real IPs or ideas have been presented to us for a long time, which I once again disagree with. Is this a genre that VR could possibly save with the whole new level of immersion for both technical racers like Gran Turismo, giving you full cockpit view, and and party racers like Crash Team Racing? That's Ooh. a good one. Having uh, stuff blow up in your face, fighting among friends. Is this a dead genre? Should I kiss the sweet days of sitting, <laughs> setting world records in burnout time trials, uh, tuning my car for hours in GT and playing cat and mouse in PGR4? And crushing my friend's hopes and dreams with a red shell goodbye. That was actually pretty good. I liked it. H- halfway through, I was like, maybe I should read this as well read. Yeah. He's got nothing else to do, so. That's true. What a miserable soul. <laughs> He's downstairs. I was talking about cat and mouse earlier at work this week. Because it was so much fun to play in Project Gotham. Yeah, I, so, let me start. I don't like racing games at all. I do. I have to be in the Hate mood them. for them. But, least I, but favorite, I do like them. Probably my least favorite genre. Maybe. I probably won't do it. I might cut in a clip of me playing Drive Club. I have. I played Drive Club for 10 minutes. Did I show you that clip? No, but I want to see it. I that. played it for 10 minutes, and all I could do was donuts. And I was trying to beat the level. And I couldn't do more than donuts. And I'm like, I can't play racing You don't know how to drive straight? Uh, and I'm not joking. Like, it's not even like I was trying to do it or be funny. Like, I can't. D- I don't get it. You just don't touch the sticks. Yeah, man. So, oh, really? Like, actually, you don't, like, aim where you want the car to go? If you want to go straight, you just let go. And it mm, goes you just give it gas. That's probably what I was doing that's wrong. That's how cars work. <laughs> um, no, I still hold the steering wheel and aim a little bit. A little bit. So, anyway, I'm awful at them, and I hate them for it. I don't it. know. I've never played a drive club, so. It was free on Plus. Still hadn't played it. Okay. I have, let, I have one of the Need for Speeds on PS4. Just letting you know. Um, I've played a lot of. So I have to start off by saying I don't like driving games. I love Mario Kart, though. I think Mario Kart Wii is great. Wii it's U a blast, one, yeah. Wii U ones. Yeah. I love Mario Kart Wii. I like Sonic All-Star Racing Transformed. Not a joke. I think it's better than Mario Kart. I uh, honestly do feel that way. It's very good. We should play it sometime. Okay. I only have it for Vita, but I'll buy like a PS3 copy and we can play it. You should. It's very good. Buy two of them. That's not happening. I bought two of the Vita one, actually, because I gave one to my girlfriend. Anyway. Um, do I think the genre is dead? No. Like you said, we get Forza every year, which sells very well. We get Gran Turismo's every once in a while, which is Sony's best franchise sales-wise. They do fantastically. Uh, the most recent one didn't do it great, but their biggest selling game is Gran Turismo. We're getting a Gran Turismo this year, I believe, on VR. Like you said, VR changes everything. I think it is going to bring people who normally wouldn't play racing games like me, I'm going to try it out, yeah. into try out at least racing games, and it might revitalize things. Uh, Drive Club VR was rated last week. We talked about it. It's coming out, so we know that that's a thing. Um, Yeah, so I think that racing games are good to go. I think the bigger problem, like there's been a couple duds. Um, The Need for Speed was a dud. Yeah, that was The Crew was a dry. Do you remember The Crew? Very, very little. It was the one where it was like supposed to be a more realistic map, and you could drive the whole United States, and it took like four or five hours to actually do it. Um, nobody talked about that game. I think it got mediocre reviews yeah, and it, it kind of died. Mediocre. 
Uh, so I just feel like the third party racing games are dead. But just I, th- about. I think we're always going to get our Nintendo racing game, our Sony racing games, and our Microsoft racing games, which is really Forza, Gran Turismo, Forza, Gran Turismo Mario, Mario Kart. Kart. Yeah. Um, and I'm fine with that because they're all very different. One is uh, kart racing, fun, whatever. One is a simulator, which is Gran Turismo is very sim. It's very difficult. And then Forza is kind of an arcade but still kind of it's in, the the in, in between. So, yeah. I do miss Project Gotham Racing. I love those games. I own that game. That was one of the, like, I don't like racing games, like I said, but I bought that one because so many of my friends had it. Oh, it was, was great. Like, everybody I knew had an Xbox had that game. I was like, I guess I'll get it because everybody else has it. And then I was like, I don't like this. Probably my favorite racing franchise, PGR. Hmm. That or Need for Speed. I love the old Need for Speed games. There's a reason I bought a PlayStation to play Need for Speed. I was telling you I like Burnout, the crash mode oh, in Burnout. I thought that was fun because that's not racing. Yeah, <laughs> it's just crashing. <laughs> Literally. Well, the that, that's the only blast. thing I can do in a racing game. Yeah, you're pretty good at that. So let's move on to his next question, which is, if there's one factor that can make a break or a video game for you, aside from fun, since we know Kevin hates fun, 100% true. Yeah, absolutely true. Uh, what is it? This was a good question. Games that don't function. Well, this yeah. This me off. <laughs> um, online only is a huge negative. I won't say it makes or breaks games, because we're going to talk about something in a little bit, but... God, online only it makes me not want to purchase your game. If the game is good it. enough, I'll still support it. But if you're if I'm on the fence and it's online only, I'm just skipping it. No, oh, it's awful. That, yeah, I'm just this is no fun. Um, what's some other things that uh, this doesn't break it, but something that hurts is uh, subtitles. I know you're on the complete opposite that's side. That's fine. I would much if your game is subtitled and it comes out the same day as a game that's like dubbed, like JRPGs or something. I'm probably gonna buy the dubbed one. Um, that's not a make or break though. I'm trying to. Th- oh, I mean, here's a good make a or lot break. Of times Connect I'll only, motion controls any only. Any type of motion only. Oh, those are awful. Yeah, there's Connect games that have probably be fine, but I've never played. Cause there's I don't own a Connect. There's one I almost bought yesterday called Rise of Nightmares. It's a horror game. It was eight dollars at a thrift store, which is too much to pay. I would pay like two, three. Um, but it looks awful. But I kind of wanted to try it just because I like horror games. Because it looks awful. But it got its Connect only, and I don't care. Um, what's another thing? If it's a racing game that breaks it, <laughs> any sort of simula- simulation like racing, I can't do. Um, Western RPGs we talked about at length. I normally, if if a game gets revealed and the first thing out of the developer's mouth is Western RPG, I you're skipping it. I tune out. Like you have to do something real special for me to care, or it has to be recommended to me multiple, 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 multiple times, like Mass Effect, for yeah. me to even try it. Um, I'm looking at all your other stuff that I don't like trying to... So all of it? Yeah. Uh, I don't have a problem with fun games, though. Let's talk about that for a minute. You do have a problem with fun games? I disagree. I have a problem with fun movies. Cause that, that is 100% true. When I go to the movies, I want, like, to take something away from it. I want it to impact me in some way. I don't like popcorn movies where you just go and watch it and you leave, and that was a waste of two hours. Not really. They're fun. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like roller coasters. Like, oh, I did it. Okay, we're done here. Like, I don't like that stuff. Um, and that's how a lot of... You like both. It depends on the movie. But I, I just don't like things like that. But as far as video games, like I think Ratchet & Clank, the game, not the movie. Saw the movie. Mediocre. Yeah. Uh, but the Ratchet & Clank game, like, I th- think that that's just a straight fun game. And yeah. I like that. So. It is. Screw you. I do like fun. Just not fun movies. No, you don't. All right, let's move on to the game releases. Gareth, back at it again. Where's this page at? There it I is. don't know. I handed it to you. Don't know. All right. We'll open up with Stellaris on PC. Uh, universe scale galactic real-time strategy game from Paradox. Uh, they're known for Crusader Kings and Europa Universalis. So, galactic RTS. Sounds kind of fun. Not for me. Yeah, there's a, something else later this week that'll. Uh, that's another thing. Let's talk about r- real time strategy. Get out of here. I love RTS. Never playing. One. I used to not like RTSs. I love. I like them now. Nope. Like I used to hate JRPGs. They used to kill. That's games fair. I didn't like JRPGs. Yeah. Like Thing, things can change, but yeah. as of right now, if you gave me a, if you were like play this game, it's a real time strategy. You're just. Not I'm like, it. sure, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's great. Yeah, I'm sure it's fun for someone. Uh, Binding of Isaac Afterbirth PS4 uh, so 
DLC for Binding of Isaac. Mm-hmm. Uh, gr- that's a really good game. I think they gave it out free on Plus, so you may have it. Um, Depends on if I had Plus at the time or not. Well, that's true. I, I mean, they may have it if they gave it out. I don't. I imagine this is an expansion similar to Don't Starve. They gave out Don't Starve for free, and then the Giant Edition came out. Um, good game. Very good. It's like a bullet hell dungeon crawler type thing. It's awesome. Cool. Uh, the Magic Circle Gold Edition, PS4. A story-driven puzzle game with uh, dark comedy elements. Interesting. Yeah, I've played... Uh, uh, what's the other story puzzle game I've played? Puzzle Quest. Those games are actually pretty fun. Lots of people like Puzzle Quest. Yeah, it's a blast. Uh... Mega Tag Mention Blanc plus Neptune versus Zombies for the Vita. Japanese horde fighter game set in an anime world where zombies come to life during a movie shoot. So this is another hyper dimension game. Blanc, one of the characters. Uh, she's Nintendo, I believe. Oh, God. Uh, I'm interested in this game. I'm surprised because this has a word that I'm pretty sure kills things for you. Zombies? Horde fighter. Oh, yeah. I'm interested. I'm not I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. Um, I guess something I should say. I got a Gamefly membership. I'll be trying that out. I've had it for a week. I don't have any games yet, so so far we're not doing too well. <laughs> um, but I'll let you guys know how that goes and kind of review Gamefly for you if you're interested in it. Um, but right now, my only thing on my queue is I have one game on my queue. I'm still just waiting for Battleborn? It. Yeah. So I'm waiting for that to show up before I put other stuff on, basically. But I had this on it, uh, so when it releases, maybe I'll get it. Fair enough. We'll see. The problem is I haven't played all of the story ones yet. I have them all. I just haven't played them all, and I don't want it to spoil something from these awesome stories. I remember when that one died, you're like, oh. <laughs> uh, next we got Starbreak on PC. Uh, free-to-play action platformer MMO in a 2.5D setting. I'm not sure how I feel about a platformer MMO, but eh. I I would have to say it. That's interesting. Uh, this is an odd mix, but... Like, last week we talked about the park coming out, and I went and watched the trailers for that, and I still think I'm going to get it. It's gotten, like, medium reviews, like, lukewarm. Um, but it just looks so interesting, and I still think I'm going to get it. So I'm going to check that out, and maybe it'll With be PC. Yeah, well, it's an MMO. Yeah. Wait, how do you platform it? Never, this sounds awful. That's what I said. That's an odd you combination. Use a keyboard? That's terrible. You never played a platform with a keyboard? No. That's how I played Ori. It's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it is not easy. <laughs> next time I play that game, I'm hooking the controller up. Uh, next, we have Tasty Lethal Tactics for PC. Uh, full release for a uh, simultaneous turn-based tactics early access game uh, where you recruit mercenaries to fight it out in a uh, rundown diner. Okay. It's a top pick for Destructoid, so somebody likes it. S- somebody out there. Uh, Uncharted 4 A Thief's End, PS4. We can skip that one. Uh, <laughs> um, great game. Like I said, the reviews. Great game according to the reviews. Um, I'm so excited to get that. Took off work. Going to play that game all day. I should have taken off work. But. Uh, I'm so excited. Yeah. I, and we'll p- hopefully have it beaten and be able to do Ideally our spoiler. Ideally, I'm done with it before I come back And here. be able to do our spoiler talk on it. So. And kick Todd off again if he's alive. If you want to check out our thoughts on the other Uncharted, last week's episode we did that. Doing um, very well. I do enjoy the Uncharted's. Yeah, I think everybody in the world that's played them. I guess Todd hasn't even played them. He's just like, I don't think I'll like it. You haven't played it. It's like me with real time strategies. I don't think I'll like it. I'll get you a fire. I've at least played some real time strategies, and I don't. At like least you try it. Uh, try next, and fire on them. They're fun. Uh, next we have Goliath PC, uh, action RPG. Where you have to build yourself a giant robot to survive. Okay. <laughs> Refrain, Prism Memories, Prism Memories for PC. Uh, Galaxy, uh, Galaxy? Galaga influenced bullet hell game. Heavy anime theme. Uh, Doom, Xbone, PS4, PC. Yeah, a Friday launch. I'm very interested in how this game does. It. I mean, it does well on websites like ClickWise. Yeah. Um, it's below Uncharted and Overwatch and well, all this I mean, stuff. Doom's a big name and the gaming industry but like i just don't get the appeal of the game at all i really don't and i played the beta and it was fun like mechanically but i like as far as single player goes i just don't get it um i guess it's the same thing people can say about halo it's like you're just shooting aliens but i mean at least the aliens have like a story to them yeah you know unless they do i could be wrong maybe they do have a maybe the demons have a real interesting backstory 
I don't know what it is. It's possible. Yeah. I have not seen a story trailer from it because I don't care. Yeah. But I mean, it's on my Gamefly queue. We'll see if I get it because I want to try it out. I want to see your Gamefly queue, by the way. I will tell you, it's five games. It is Battleborn 1 for PS4. I deleted the Xbox uh, version of it because I played so much on PS4 recently, which we'll talk about. Um, it is Doom is next. Um, Overwatch is next. Uh, and then I had the Hyperdimension Zombies game, but I got rid of it, and I put in uh, Quantum Break. Oh, okay. Quantum Break on there. You need to get Quantum Break so I can play it. Okay. Yeah, you heard me. <laughs> uh, next we have Hero Defense Haunted Island PC. Uh, full release for an early access tower defense game. You're trying to defeat the world's most powerful vampire. Do we talk about how much I hate early access? Yeah. It's awful. It just makes you it, it's weird. Early access is kind of the same thing to me as like a Kickstarter with Mighty Number no. Nine, where it gets delayed so much that when it comes out, nobody cares. Nobody even realizes it wasn't out. Yeah, that's how I feel about early access. I'm like, okay. Uh, last, we have Project G for the PC. Uh, P rele- PC release for iOS app. Side scrolling shoot 'em Okay, that's all I got. Cool. Now we can move on to what we played this week. Um, you can go first. I got a lot to say. So. What did I play this week? Oh, did my uh, first Ratchet and Clank uh, challenge run through? Yeah, I got to do that. I've put it off. I, I put it off last week to do the Uncharted. I had to do one before I got to Uncharted. Right. I put it off last week to play Uncharted 1, 2, and 3. Did that. Then Severed came out, which I don't talk about. I yep. did that, and then I kept playing things, and I'm like, oh, I'm never going to get to this Ratchet and Clank. So now, if I'm going to do it, I'll have, like, two days to do it, which... You can do it in two days. I can. It, it does make the game harder, but it actually makes it a little more fun. I'd somehow get more fun the second time. Just because you're already powerful? Because I have all the, a bunch of weapons, and I'm using different weapons just to get levels with them. and It's just something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else did I do? A little bit more League. Probably done with that game for a while. Why? Because Uncharted. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought something happened. You no. were talking about how now you like you pick your lane before they. Yeah, all the all the you get to do a bunch of stuff before the game starts. It makes it easier to get into a game. Yeah. Unless people like you who just leave. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah. I have good reasons. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, more of the more of the show, the usual stuff. Mm-hmm. Mostly Ratchet and Clank, though. Um. So first, I played Severed. I platinumed it. Uh, beat it. Love that game. Fantastic. Uh, I would say, <laughs> I would say, if you have a Vita, go get Severed. It is so good. Um, the story is fine, but the gameplay is great, and it makes that's something. There we go. There's another thing to add to the question. Something uh, touchscreen games. I'm like, that's awful. Severed is a fantastic touchscreen game. Really? There is only one part of it where the touchscreen's annoying, and it's because you're timed. Oh, uh, okay. And that's it. And it's optional. You don't even have to do it. So uh, the game is very, very good, and it does the thing where it's RPG elements. I guess I'll explain the game. I've explained it before, but I'll explain it now that I've played through everything on it. Um, It's a dungeon crawler very similar to Persona Q, first-person dungeon crawler. Uh, you're solving puzzles, doing, like, little riddles. You'll find, like, a book that tells you it has, like... uh, arrows and stuff and you'll have to find where on the map those arrows could be walked like in that exact order and something will happen if you do it things like that um so you're unlocking the map as you you travel the dungeon then there's set fights in it so no enemies respawn or anything like that when you finish a fight they're dead and so they were able to put exactly however many fights they needed in the game you do the fights the way they work is uh enemies have weak points and they'll block their own weak points and you have to hit them at the angle that they're exposed from or however every enemy is different. And then there's a little meter on the bottom that shows when they're going to attack. So you need to look at that and swipe the opposite direction of their swipe uh, to block the attack, which is fine. And then they start introducing two enemies. So you need to watch when the other one's going to attack and then turn and face him and attack him. And then maybe you got to turn back and block the other one so it becomes kind of like a music game. And then it starts getting crazy when you're fighting like four at once. And you need to like turn, block him, turn, block him, turn, exposed weak point, turn, block him, turn, exposed weak point. You need to like get in the rhythm of it. Uh, it's really, really good. The dungeon exploring is great. And then before you beat the game, you can go back in 100%. It's got like a Metroidvania. You get new abilities, which yeah. lets you go to the first dungeon and like unlock everything. And then you get a bunch of abilities. Uh, by the end of that, you should be completely leveled up and you're real boss and 
there's only one fight in it that's like frustrating and it's optional. So yeah, uh, that game's great. Um, we played Hell Divers. Yeah, I Finally. left that one off. Yeah, I ended up buying it like the next day and just playing it for. Oh, you didn't get it for free. I bought like the twenty dollars version that has like oh, DLC and stuff on gotcha. it. Gotcha. Um, yeah, you got it. Our, our friend Nick that we played it oh, with, it's a blast. Went and downloaded it. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna probably play more of that tonight. Yay. Um, really, really enjoyed Hell Divers. It's a lot of fun. Um, and then the big one, Battleborn. I put. I went to Redbox. <laughs> Because I found out they had games. I didn't even know that. Yeah, they have like two games or something like that. I mean, they have like Dark Souls and stuff like that. So yeah, like, I, I went and got that. Um, kept it for a couple days. Gosh, I really love that game. It's so unfortunate. So let's talk about how unfortunate this is. It comes out a week before Uncharted. Yep. Yeah. And then three weeks before Overwatch, which is a game that completely overshadows it. Completely. I got to play that beta a little bit. But yeah, they p- they released the beta the same day that Battleborn came out. Like, they were really picking their things. And the thing is, the games aren't similar at all. No. They're not even close. Um, and people wouldn't compare them except for their art styles. They're so similar. Um, Overwatch is 100% just a shooter. It where just feels like a... A first-person shooter. Yeah, it's just an arena like shooter. An ability-based first-person shooter. Right, and instead of, like, in Unreal... If you were a robot, you could jump higher. If you were the little guy, you could run faster. Like, it's really no different. You just have more in-depth abilities yeah. for each character, and you can swap your characters during gameplay and all this stuff. Battleborn is a MOBA 100%. It has a story. You start the game. It's actually single player. You do the tutorial. It's this big, long story. It's funny. Um, you do the mission, and then you can either hop into the story missions, or you can go do the PvP. I did only PvP. Um, I tried doing a story mission and it didn't work, and I'll tell you why. Um, so I did the PvP. I the problem the game has problems, um, yeah. not bad ones. I feel like almost all the problems are MOBA problems that I hate You're about just MOBAs. Not used to MOBAs, yeah. So there's three different game modes. One of them is domination, basically, um, like Call of Duty domination. There's three points you got to capture them for yeah. the most amount of time, and then there's NPCs that spawn, and if you kill the NPC, your character levels up instantly. Um, I just don't think that mode is that fun. And the problem is the mode's fine, but like the MOBA mode is so much better than the other two modes that yeah. I don't know why you'd even play the other two. Yeah, uh, League, League used to have a second mode like that, and it's just gone now because it was just not as good as the normal Right, map. that's how I feel with this. So then the other mode is like a minion. You have to like bring your minions into a, a portal, and whoever first, like different minions are worth different points, and whoever gets to 500 points first wins. And I'm just like, this is dumb. That's just kind of weird. Each one, now, here's the problem. Now, then there's the MOBA mode, which is, I'll explain. Um, each mode only has two maps. That is an issue. Not really. It is awful. League only has one map for everything. I know. And it's this so, is... That's so you can learn the map really well. Though. That's fine, but this is not League. Like, you're, this is a console game. Yeah, that's true. It is that, quite Like, different. I don't understand. You can't get away with that on a console game. It makes it look... Even if it's not, it makes it look like you don't have any content in your game. And then, of course, there's two maps. Guess what? No one picks the other map. Yeah, they just picked the map. There's two maps. You always vote. And the one that wins is always the flat map. Because there's a map that's built like this. And whichever team takes control first gets to fight downhill for the rest of the fight. And they win every single time. Yeah, that sounds miserable. And nobody picks that map. So you're always playing, like, the flat map uh, that doesn't have that, which was the map from the beta. And I love it. Um... The, I think the game's great. I'm like level 20 or something. I put like 19 hours into it this week or whatever. I played it for nine hours straight yesterday. Like I nice. really, really like the game. So this is another point that I don't like about it, though. Every time I shut off the game, I shut off the game five times, meaning I played it in five sessions. Four of the five times I shut off the game is because I went into a match and somebody picked Thorn before I did. So I backed out of the match because I only play as Thorn. Like, that's who I want to play as. And I don't think that that's a problem. Like, it's easily solved with you pick your character, then go into the queue. Like, I don't see a problem with that. And then they could have you, like, maybe you can pick, like, a suggested suggested team. Like, who you think you'd want in your party and stuff like that. See, League used to have a mode like that Mm -hmm. where you could pick your champion ahead of time and tell it what you wanted to be matched up with. Oh, really? It was actually pretty neat. It just took... Sometimes it would take longer to find gotcha. games like that. Yeah, and then like I feel like you should just have the option to not have that as a thing, yeah, and see, then like, it, it could go faster. Separate thing, yeah. Right. So like, 
my biggest problem is I go into the game, somebody picks Thorn, I only play as Thorn. It's literally the only character I play as. So I'm like, I don't, I only want to play this game as Thorn. Like, I think that's completely reasonable, so I back out. Then, you can't get into a new game until that game's finished. Okay. So Annoying. If, if you back okay. out before the game starts, it should you shouldn't have to wait. No. If you back out after characters are select, like, once somebody picks, like, a character, it doesn't do that. So I'm like, okay, great. The other reasons... Okay, so I back out. I'm like, okay, well, I'll play single player. Nope. If you go into a single player game, it puts you back into the other game. And I'm like, this oh, is really? so ridiculous. So I can't play single player. I can't play a different game mode. Like, I, I have to go into this game mode. You know what? Shut off the game. I'll do something else. Right. So four of the times I shut off the game was because of that. And I just think that that's so stupid. Like, let me at least play the single player while you're... Yeah, that doesn't make any like, sense Like, I can't even me. play by myself when you're doing it. Like, that's so dumb. And then the other time I shut off the game was because the internet went out at my house. And I was like, oh, I'll play single player. Nope. Online only. You can't play single player unless you're connected to the internet. Couldn't play the game. Yeah. Stupid. It requires an internet connection. It's so dumb. I just want to play the single player. So... Anyway, I really like the game. I think if you have friends, like you can get a couple friends to get the game. That's when it's at its best, when you're actually communicating. Because if you get a team that you can tell when the other team is communicating oh, in yeah. the party, because you'll get flanked. Like you'll be taking down a sniper, and all of a sudden somebody will come up from behind and start attacking you. You're like, damn it, that guy told him that I was Little here. Bastard. Yeah, like uh, you get into lots of games where people don't talk and they go significantly downhill. Um, you need strategy in that game. It's nothing like Overwatch. Like I said, Overwatch, you kill people in a few seconds. You're going at it. This game, you can be in a fight with somebody for three minutes going back and forth. Um, it's really, really good. I really like it. It's so unfortunate when it came out and how it came out and how overshadowed it is. So. If you have yeah. some friends and you're looking for a Destiny, not Destiny style, but Destiny-esque in that you play it with your friends every day, you can log on and do that. I would recommend Blood, uh, Bloodborne. That's another thing. Name is awful. Battleborn. What a terrible name. What do you got against Battleborn? It's a horrible name. It's like the most generic name ever. Yeah, fair enough. It's so generic. And I keep saying Bloodborne. <laughs> yeah. Which you haven't even played much. Uh, sure, but I mean, I keep saying it because it's popular. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, so that's it. And then I'm just waiting on Uncharted. Uh, maybe I'll load up Ratchet and Clank a little bit this week and before Uncharted, but probably not. The game's fun. All right, and then now it's the unpopular opinion where Todd talks about uh, Civil War with you. Oh, look, it's over. Oh, <laughs> damn it, Todd. All right, so since Todd's not here, I guess that's the end of the episode. I guess we're done. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Kellen. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, share, subscribe, and uh, leave a question, comment, or an unpopular opinion for us to talk about on an episode where we actually do an unpopular opinion. Thank you so much for watching. Bada bing, bada boom. At least we don't have to worry about Todd falling on the steps today. <laughs> Maybe that's how he went. His last moments was just him tumbling downstairs. Uh, He's just like, oh, I'm so clumsy. Oh, God, no. <laughs> what a terrible person. I can't stand him. <laughs>